Hi ladies and gents, boys and girls, this is another board we affectionately call the Socket Board. It belongs to James Hardy, it's belonged to a few people before then. Uh, it's been a victim of what I would call impatient desoldering. What I mean by that is, they've desoldered it on the back but they haven't fully cleared the holes out and then they've tried to yank parts out and they've broken pads, broken through holes, whatever. Uh, yeah, you see your nice... RS branded RAM there, I'll talk about that in a second. So there's a couple of different ways you can fix that. Um, you can strip all the parts off and use fine wires to refix the tracks at a board level, which is what the original one of this board did for every repair after this one. Or you can add fix wires, what is what he's done here. There's a lot of flux in the back of this board as well. I've cleaned it all off, I've refloated a couple of things and I've tidied up and re-rooted some of those link wires because they're a little bit long and a couple of them were broken when I received the board. Original owner of this board, the guy that first repaired it, is a very, very good friend of mine. This is one of the very earliest repairs he did. Bizarrely, it's about 20 years later now and he's retired from the hobby. So, it just goes to show you how much time's passed. What I've done to it is... I had borrowed the CPU for something else, so I've fitted a new CPU. I've fitted a new RAM because the original one was crusty, and when I did all that and fired up, I had a very, very, very interesting fault. The board wasn't booting, and the CPU wasn't executing code. Instead, it was counting from 0 to 65,000 odd, and then just repeating itself. What was actually wrong was there was a problem with U29 over here which was causing memory access to all screw up and the CPU couldn't access its RAM or its ROM but it was trying to so that when it, the board reset the reset vector it got was zero and every instruction it got after that was zero which interpreted as NOP so the CPU thought it was executing a program and basically just was executing a whole ROM worth of do nothing and count one cycle so it's just become a glorified binary counter. What it turned out to be, as you zoom you in here, was a trace had broken between pin 9 and pin 1 of U29 there. I think the trace was corroded on, on the way out and it just popped. So I linked that and Look at how bright these yellows are! And there we go. Just <laughs> cover those yellows up so you can see it actually doing its thing. But we're running. At least we're running the test ROM. There'll probably be a couple more broken tracks to find. I mean, like I said, I had to replace the RAM because the RAM was pretty crusty. But there's likely to be more broken traces around here. So, when it comes to actually doing that power supply sounds terrible. That still needs repair as well. That's got the overheat and rectifier, but that's all right. It's still supplying five volts to do what we need here. But all right, there'll be a few more traces to fix. The test ROM doesn't look at U3, U14, anything up here. It only runs the core CPU. 68681 RAM and cycles these lights. Everything else, as long as there's no shorts and no conflicts in the bus, it doesn't look at it. I do RS at the time. Back in the day had some sort of supply contract with Hitachi or something because that's a Hitachi RAM but it's RS stamped. Or maybe they just stamped the part number or ease of. But yeah, it's alive now. That was a new old stock when I had. Try and pick RAM and stuff like that up whenever I can find it because it's getting rarer to find. Admittedly, I could have bought a brand new RAM to put in there, but. I'm not paying the eleven pound whatever when I could get one in there for a couple of quid. See you second. So yeah, the board is now good. 
and hopefully once I get chip in there it replaces it U19 hopefully we'll get round to pre-testing this later on got a couple more of these to do first I've got another CPU here and another RAM I've got another couple of 68, 681s I've got a big bag of parts salvaged over the years and I've got a couple of empty PCBs that I can populate and hopefully get on with them but yeah another one lives didn't take an incredible amount of time to do and yeah before I sign off I've got plastic tab transistors here that I've never seen before I don't trust them I might grab some off a donor board and just fit them here yeah, although no mega boards or donors at the minute because there's a bit of a resurgence in the popularity of mega machines, so everybody's looking for these things. Anyways, another one ticked off the list, and bye bye for now.